Alrighty, welcome guys to your official, unofficial affiliate of Eastern Washington on the Big Sky Podcast Network, as well as an affiliate member of um, FCS Fans Nation and Fans Nation Network's YouTube channel. Uh, this is Eagles Power Hour. Uh, I'm your host, Patrick Frakes, and uh, today we're covering both football and a little basketball as well. Um, just a little bit of football today. We're just going to go over a few coaching staff updates and then... Um, we're going to get into a little bit of a season recap. Well, not recap, but season overview so far for the basketball season uh, for the men's side of things. We'll get a little bit into the women's side of things. I haven't gotten to watch them nearly as much as the men, so uh, I'm not going to you know, go way into it. But, uh, yeah, so uh, we're going to start it off here with, uh, with uh, some uh, coaching updates here. Um, we added one defensive analyst here, uh, Nick Roger. He's a guy that is coming from, I believe this is Division Three St. Vincent College. Um, he was a defensive line assistant. He also spent some time as a JV coach and a quarterback coach at Mercer Island High School, you know, a, a decent high school football program here in Washington. Uh, he spent some time interning with UW's football team, you know, breaking down film and stuff. Um, happy to have him on staff here. And then and uh, we also brought on Nick Farman as the director of player personnel. Uh, he's he's done a ton of work in the recruiting space in the Northwest. Uh, I know he, he spent some time working for Catapult, who uh, does, you know, health data with heart straps and stuff like that. Uh, he's a guy that is very involved with it, recruiting in the Northwest. I know he's worked for multiple recruiting agencies who connect players to college, you know, college uh coaches and stuff like that, uh, especially like he's a guy that's followed most of Eastern and Idaho's recruiting class, even when he wasn't working for Eastern and um, such a Washington grad, you know, happy to see him out on staff. Uh, he's a guy that has had a lot of, uh, he's been um, highly recommended and had spoke very high, spoken very highly of on Twitter by, you know, former coworkers and stuff like that, which is a fun thing to see. Um, and then we're going to talk here, uh, the defensive coordinator situation. Um, we still do not have an official announcement as of Tuesday morning, uh, January 23rd, 2024. We don't know totally for sure who the name is, but, uh, what I have heard is that Eastern has their guy and they've had their guy for a couple weeks now. Uh, we're just kind of waiting for the hiring process to, finish up here. I don't know who the name is or who it is exactly, but um, what it sounds like is we are just waiting for uh, the the hiring process to get finished up here, um, get through HR and all that stuff. They are state employees, so they need to, um, you know, meet all the annoying, boring paperwork type stuff before they can officially be announced. So uh, once that is announced, uh, expect a Eagles Power Hour episode kind of breaking down who this new defensive coordinator is, what scheme they run, yada, yada, yada. Um, so, yeah, excited excited, and uh, anxiously waiting to find out who that name would be with the way that the defense was in 2023, just kind of knowing that it didn't feel like a talent issue defensively. It really did feel like a, a, getting a better, more competent defensive coordinator in there would, um, you know, help out in uh, p potentially even make Eastern a borderline playoff team last year. A lot of one possession games that have lost. So, um, all righty. So now we're going to get moving into basketball here. Um, so uh, Eastern's Ben's basketball team has been nothing short of phenomenal this year. Uh, one of the best teams, if not the best team so far in the Big Sky Conference. Um, I'm mostly going to hit on um, – in conference stuff, uh, the out of conference is tough because uh, it, it it's hard to it's hard to get a good idea of what teams are when Eastern played one of the toughest non conference schedules in the entire country. Uh, as you can see here, Utah, Ole Miss, Cincinnati, Stanford, a bunch of Power Fives, Wazoo, Southern California, USC, uh, Air Force. You know, Cal Poly even is a really solid mid major. Uh, Washington, like we played a gauntlet of a non non conference schedule that was really tough, and uh, Eastern did compete in a few of these games, but came up short in a lot of them. Uh, we came, we came into kind of the non conference schedule at like a or the in conference schedule at like something like three or four and seven, and we just did not look 
the record wise did not look great. And uh, we ended up surprising some people, which was kind of interesting. Um, I know even though Eastern won the uh, conference last year in the regular season, um, they were not picked to uh, to be the um, to be the preseason favorite in the Big Sky. That went to Weber State, and uh, that was something that I was a little interested in. But we did lose a lot of talent, and I wasn't totally sure how the team would go. But uh, so far, it has looked nothing short of phenomenal. Um, just going kind of game by game here. Uh, Utah, Ole Miss. These were Ole Miss was a game that we competed with uh, Ole them for you know two and a half. Well, not two and a half. Excuse me, like a half and a half. And um, you know, it kept it close. Relatively played solid defense, but they ended up just you know out talenting us a little bit. Uh, Utah was not a close game at all. Cincinnati was another one of those games that felt relatively close the whole game. Like the result wasn't completely out of doubt. Um, but again, they just kind of out talented us. Stanford was a game that wasn't very close that whole game. Uh, not even going to cut her walla walla. That was a whopping. This Wazoo game felt like one that Eastern had the potential to win. Uh, just kind of got out talented once again by the Pac 12 team. Uh, USC just smoked us. Uh, but this was a game that uh, Kaiman had 25 points. Uh, and he ended up winning Big Sky Player of the Week for this week of the uh, 27th through, or excuse me, this. Um, I believe he won it December 12th. So he got it for so this USC game. Um, he uh, had 25 points as well as this Air Force game. He had 25 points. So uh, he ended up. Or it might have been because of the Portland Bible College game, I guess. Or Well, no, it would have been the Air Force game. But anyways, uh, I digress. Um the Air Force game was a really fun one to watch. They ended up beating Air Force, who, who is a good team this year. Air Force ended up um, – uh, they came in this game with high expectations to beat Eastern Washington, and the announcers were just shocked when Eastern came out and looked like the better team that whole first half. Eastern dominated this first half, and then it got a little hairy at the end there, but they were able to pull it out. Uh, we had a coach ejection in this game, which was a fun one to see. Uh, Portland Bible College just smoked them. Uh, this Cal Poly game was an interesting one that probably should have been more of a blowout. Uh, you know, shots weren't falling for Eastern, and, you know, uh, the defense, you know, held Cal Poly to 53 points, which was nice to see. Uh, the defense on this team has been really, really, really good this year. Uh, one of the more talented Eastern defensive teams we've ever really had here, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Um Held Cal Poly to just 53 points and ended up winning that game through a tough shooting performance. Uh, went up to Washington and lost a close one. It kind of sounded like we should have won this game. Uh, there's some some interesting officiating calls. Uh, I didn't get to watch it because it was Pac-12 Network, but listen to it. And Larry Weir was pissed off about some, some calls, which usually means something happened that shouldn't have happened because he typically doesn't get too insanely fired up about uh, calls and referees. But uh, anyways... Um, moving on to the conference schedule, which is more where I'm going to kind of talk about. Uh, this Portland State game was one that I got to sneak out to, which was really fun. Uh, Eastern just absolutely smoked them. Uh, this was a, a game where uh, Coward uh, had a ton of points. He kind of really bro he kind of broke out as an offensive shooter. Uh, this is something that I was a little nervous coming into the conference season that uh, Eastern didn't really have a go-to shooter. Uh, Kaiman can shoot pretty well, but other than that, none of these guys really were mainly shooters last year. I guess you could say Price was a little bit, and Eric Strepp has a decent stroke, but the rest of these guys like weren't necessarily offensive powerhouses in 2020, the 22-23 season. Uh, and Sajid Coward came out in this game and was just knocking down everything which was really, really fun to see his development as a shooter. Uh, he's he's developed into what looks like a potential unanimous first-team all-conference type player. Uh, and if Dylan Jones didn't exist, he would be probably the favorite for player of the year so far. Um, the Sacramento State game, we just blew him out. Uh, they're, you know, Eastern's just a lot better than them. The length is great. And, uh, you know, this is a game I didn't really watch very much of because I just knew it would be a blowout. Uh, this USD game... Uh, was one where Eric Strepp went off and had 32 points, which was really cool to see. Uh, he was hitting threes all day, as well as in this North Dakota State game. He had another six threes or something like that in this game. Uh, the offense was just 
flow in these two games. The shooting was incredible from beyond the arc. And um, it was good to see the Big Sky put down the Summit League, uh, beat NDSU, beat USD. Uh, that was good to see. The uh, Eagle women also won their two Summit League, Big Sky Summit League Challenge games. So Eastern Washington went a clean 4-0 sweep of the Summit League in the Big Sky Summit League Challenge, which was awesome to see. Um, then we moved on to Idaho. Uh, this was a game where Eastern, one of Eastern's toughest shooting performances in the conference schedule so far. Uh, Idaho is a really good defensive team. And um, Eastern was able to win this game by you know getting into the paint playing really good inside defense, making it tough on Idaho to get in the paint and scoring a lot of points in the paint, which we did uh, ended up pulling this one out despite a rough shooting out, but especially in the first half. Um, this Weber State game was an awesome one to see. Uh, I didn't get to watch the whole thing, but I got to watch a good bit of it. Um, and this was a game where Eastern came out not looking great, came out flat off in, or defensively and offensively. We couldn't – we were shooting okay, but – uh, Weber State just looked like the better, more prepared team in that first half. And in the second half, the shooting stroke just opened up, and we were able to come back and uh, have a lead. We were down by seven at the halftime. We were down by, uh, I believe, down by 13 at one point in the first half of this, this Weber State game. Uh, came back, brought it to seven at halftime, and then in the second half, uh, brought it all the way back and ended up winning this game in a close one down the stretch. Uh, had some really timely defense from uh Arch truly such a coward. He blocked a game tying three attempt from Dylan Jones in the final seconds and uh, was able to pull this one away. Uh, it was actually a five point game and then Weber just kind of hit a garbage time three. So it, it looks a lot closer than it really was at the end there. But um, uh, then Idaho State, this was a, um, a good win. Uh, we're going to dive into these two games a little bit deeper later, but uh, this Idaho State game was a good win. It was a game that was closer than it should have been at halftime due to just some tough rebounding, but uh, did end up pulling this one out uh, as we should have. You know, Idaho State's not nearly as talented of a team as Eastern Washington. But uh, we're going to kind of get into some of the uh, statistics here uh, and the standings overall right now. Eastern's the number one team in the conference standings-wise, um, but we have played the four bottom teams so far in the league in Portland State, Sac State, Idaho State, Idaho, uh, and kind of blew all these teams out. But um, Eastern has looked the part as the best team in the conference, beat a team like Weber State who, um, you know, they, they they started off with a rough start, but they were the preseason favorite. And they, you know, in their first couple of games, we're looking at them and we're like, oh, yeah, they look good. But then they ended up losing a game to last night. They actually lost a game to Montana by, you know, 10, 12 points. They lost to Eastern Washington. Um, they lost a game to Sac State of all teams. Like they've had, they have had an interesting start to their conference season. And um, shoot, Idaho had it close with them for a half. So they're, they're, they're kind of a interesting situation right now. They, they have Dylan Jones, who's like projected to be a potential NBA draft pick. And, um, so, you know, you, you'd hope that they were looking a little bit better than they are right now. But uh, anyways, um, you know, Eastern hasn't played the meat of their schedule yet. We have that coming up here in the week, but they've looked absolutely incredible. And they really uh, – Eastern is top three in just about every single statistical category. Um, just looking at some of the team stats here, Eastern is number one in overall defense points wise, averaging just allowing 64 points a game, which is incredible. Um, number two in overall offense, scoring 83 points a game. Uh, the scoring margin is by far and none way above anyone else. Um, and again, we've played kind of the weaker teams in the conference so far, but you know, you can just kind of tell that Eastern is one of the best teams in the country or on the conference, I should say, excuse me. Um, the team field goal percentage has been incredible. This team has been shooting just absolutely lights out uh, so far in conference. Uh, you know, we're averaging up around 50% in almost every category or in almost every game. Uh, the Idaho game was a little tough, but, um, you know, team field goal percentage is up there around 50, 53, 54%, number two in the conference. And uh, we're holding opponents to just 37%, which is incredible um like i said the defense has been awesome eastern is the number 14 in the country tallest team in the country the 14 tall team tallest team and that would probably be even higher if it wasn't for uh point guard ellis magnuson who's you know around six one other than that everyone else who gets playing time is up there six five plus um it's a very tall long team that makes it really tough 
on opponent opponent offenses to run the way they want to it makes it really tough to get those easy baskets like uh back screens and all that type of stuff just gets clogged up and the passing lanes just get clogged up by the length on this team. And uh, anytime you're in the paint, I believe Eastern Washington is number two in the conference in block shots as well. So um, moving on to three point field goal percentage uh, Eastern's number one, which has been amazing. Uh, this was the big concern coming in offensively is like, do we have a go-to shooter? Uh, it turns out that any, anyone on the team can knock down a three. Um, Everyone has every anyone can take a open shot and they want to, which is the only interesting thing is I think Ellis Magnuson's the only one on the team that doesn't consistently shoot threes all the time. And he's kind of the short guard that you would expect to take threes, but uh, you know he's more of a addition defense type guy. But uh, you know it's just incredible the three point the three point consistency here and uh, the number of three points made, making almost ten a game, and um the we're not letting opponents make threes either. Uh, you know, they're number one shooting less than 30% from three, number one in the conference so far in that as well. Uh, it's just domination so far in the big sky from Eastern. Uh, just number one in almost everything, number two in almost everything. Uh, you know, we're making free throws. Opponents are about middle of the pack. That doesn't really matter, though. But uh, rebounding is the one side of the game that can be a little scary for Eastern so far this year. Uh, we've given up a lot of offensive rebounds to kind of bad teams that you would hope we could out rebound. And part of that is just because teams miss a lot of shots against Eastern, but we have given up like 10, 11 offensive rebounds to a few bad teams that you would hope not to see. But uh, despite that, you know, we're one of the top rebounding teams in this conference, you know, top three in both, uh, except for offensive rebounds. Um, you know, this has been tough be to get offensive rebounds when your team is making over 50% of their shots most nights. So, uh, but getting a lot of defensive rebounds, have a solid rebound margin, and um, it's been good to see. Another small Achilles heel of this team so far has been the turnovers, uh, averaging just shy of 14 turnovers a game. Uh, has not been ideal, and it's gotten Eastern into some close games that shouldn't have been close. Um at least for part of games. Um, again, this is just the conference stats. So um, this is just, this isn't including, you know, USC and Ole Miss and all that, but uh, you know, these have been the turnovers and the giving up offensive rebounds have really been the only two little weaknesses of this team so far this year. Uh, going over to the missed stats uh, block shots, Eastern's number two in the conference. Uh, blocking 4.4 a game, just shy of Idaho State. Idaho State's had a few insanely big games blocking shots. Um, number one in assist, averaging 17.2 17 .17 assists per game. Uh, this team dishes the ball around, which is awesome to see. No one's selfish in trying to take shots that they shouldn't. Um, number three in steals, averaging 6.6 .6 a game. Uh, you know, it, it really has been a all around very balanced, impressive performance so far in the season for Eastern Washington, both on offense and on defense. It's been efficient offense, uh, you know, making a lot of your shots that you take, a lot of assists, a lot of getting a good look rather than taking some contested, you know, weird thing, uh, getting the ball into the paint when shots aren't falling. And, uh, you know, it, it really has been just impressive. And I know I keep saying that, but it had, it's just has been watching this team. They're so tall. They're so long. It, presents so many matchup nightmares for teams defensively where, it, you know, it's kind of a, well, we tried, but, you know, they can just kind of do what they want offensively. And that's that's what it's really been uh, so far. Uh, Cedric Coward and Ethan Price both up here in conference scoring so far, averaging just around 17 points a game. Um, uh, we're going to go over to rebounding here. Uh, Cedric Coward is up there with the rebounding. Cedric Coward really has been this team's MVP in conference so far. Uh, the dude's been offensively looking much better. He's the team leader in assists, or excuse me, in rebounds. Um, you know, he's one of the top shooters in the league so far, uh, averaging 65% right now, um, which is just incredible. Um Looking, just kind of scanning some of these stats. I haven't looked super hard. Kaiman and Price both up here in uh, threes made per game, uh, as well as Coward. Again, he's just been incredible so far this year. Luan Watts hasn't missed a free throw yet, which is really fun to see because he's a, he's a guy that gets to the line a, a, 
at a high, pretty high clip as well as Cedric Coward. And uh, uh, I don't see Casey Jones on here. Oh, no, there he is, Casey Jones. Casey Jones, another guy that gets to the line a lot. Um, just kind of looking at Big Sky assists here. Um, you know, Magnuson up there with four assists a game. Uh, that's kind of what he's he's good at. Uh, Ethan Price has another, you know, three a game. Jake Kaiman up there with three a game. Uh, you know, this team is very unselfish and does a really good job sharing the ball and not getting selfish, taking shots that you shouldn't, uh, which is, you know, always awesome to see. And I think that's been the downfall of a few other big sky teams at Weber State. Um, look in here, Eric Strupp and Luan Watts both up there at steals per game, averaging almost two steals a game. Uh, block shots. This is when more Cedric Howard has been incredible this year. He's only averaging 1.6, but there's been several games where it's just like Coward and Ethan Price have just been rejecting anything in the paint. Uh, and it's been really, really fun to see. Um, you know, block shots are always just real, real fun. Um, but, uh, we'll go over here to, oh, it's not loaded. Go over to the team stats so far in conference. You know, Price and Cedric Howard up there um, leading the team in scoring, followed by Casey Jones, um, Jake Kyman, Luan Watts. Luan Watts has been an awesome guy to watch defensively. He's just a he's just a thorn in opponents' sides uh, when it comes to uh, especially defense. But you know, he he plays really well off ball defense, off ball offense as well. Um, Dane Eric Strupp's been a, a bright spot off the bench for this Eastern team. Uh, he's had a few big, big nights shooting. Uh, he's improved his defense as well. And i uh, really excited to see how Dane finishes up this year because he should have been a Big Sky Player of the Week uh, during the Big Sky Summit League Challenge. Uh, he had a 32 and a 27-point performance, and Dylan Jones still got it over him because of the game winner over South Dakota State, which is kind of annoying, but it's okay. Um, Mason Williams has also been a guy that will come off the bench and knock down a few threes. Um, Hartman's been a guy that's played really good defense for us, um, as well as, of course, Casey Jones always plays good defense and a big hustle guy that uh, rebounds the ball very well and gets to the free throw line. Uh, Coward has led the team in rebounding so far this year. Uh, Coward's length has just been incredible to watch. He's, uh, like I said earlier, he's looking like a first team all big sky conference type guy, uh, leading the team in almost every category except for, you know, little things like free throws made and. I mean, shoot, he's up there with assists. He's up there with rebounds. He's up there with leading the team in block shots. He's up there with steals. Like, uh, he really has been the team MVP so far this year. But, um, now we're going to kind of deep dive into uh, the Weber State game here a little bit deeper. Um, and I, I want to say I'm not I'm not a big sky um, expert by any means. Uh Bit, excuse me, basketball expert by any means, but uh, I know a little bit about basketball and I can kind of read some, read some stats off the, off, off the page to you guys, which is, uh, you know, about as good as I am for basketball analysis, at least how I feel. Um, but uh, yeah, this Weber state game, like I kind of talked about earlier, uh, it was a game of two halves. Uh, this first half Eastern was just getting kind of dominated is what it really felt like. Um, you know, we were down by 13 points at one point to Weber State in this first half. Uh, they were just – it felt like they were making everything. They were able to pe to penetrate on us, which is something that really no other team has so far. Um, so far, Eastern's make it, made it very tough on teams to penetrate and get in the paint for those easy buckets. And uh, Weber State with Dylan Jones and a uh, threat, uh, they, were really, they were able to take advantage of, you know, slashing into the paint – and it allowed them to either kick it out for an open shot or hit a hit a contested layup or, you know, something like that. And they, they did a really good job of that. Um, you know, just looking at the first half numbers, we were shooting fine in the first half. They were just getting a lot of easy buckets that uh, allowed them to um, take that lead uh, earlier into the game. They hit eight threes in the first half. A lot of drive and kickouts that uh, were just falling for them. Um, and a lot of easy buckets in the middle in the inside, um, which it kind of is about what you could say for the um, about what you can break down for that first half. Uh, Eastern was able to kind of fire back and, and bring the game within seven points at halftime, as you can see right here. 
And then uh, the second half was just a total different ball game, man. Uh, Eastern wasn't shooting the wasn't shooting the three lights out, but they they lit up the defense. Um, the defense was incredible, and they held Weber State to just thirty three percent shooting from the field in the second half, and twenty percent from three. Um, this was what won the game for Eastern Washington in that second half. Uh, we were consistently shooting okay, around fifty percent, you know, but um, they were able to, you know not allow those easy looks inside in the second half that they were able to get in the first half. And uh, it, 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 um, it's what allowed this team to claw back into the game and take the lead and end up holding it off at the end. The timely defense at the end is what really sealed it for us. Uh, Casey Jones, or excuse me, Dylan Jones has hit two game winners already this year. Uh, and he had a chance down three uh, to, to go tie the game up. Uh, as the buzzer went off, and uh, Coward was able to block his shot, which was really, really fun to see. Um, Coward had a double double performance and really lit the scoreboard up scoring wise in this game. Uh, he had 24 points, 10 for 13 from the th- field, and three for three three pointers. Um, uh, he also got to the line and made one. Um, 10 rebounds, which is just awesome. Um, Ethan Price had a good game passing the ball. He had five assists as well as 22 points. Price had a really good day, good day on the inside, especially in that second half. Um, three turnovers, which wasn't great, but um, Casey Jones has a good day rebounding the ball. He was, you know, his typical 12 points. He's usually good for about 12 points a game. He, you know, he's not the, the biggest shooter in the world, but he'll usually get you at least 12 to 10 points a game and play really good defense and rebound ball, which is what he's been doing all year. Um, Kyman had another nine points. Uh, Luan Watts with 11 points off the bench is really fun to see. He's He's been a guy that, you know, like I was saying earlier, just a thorn in people's side, uh, playing really tough hustle defense, uh, getting two steals and five rebounds, getting those hustle stats, as well as getting those 11, 11 points, which is, uh, you know, that that's all you can ask for from a from a freshman off the bench. Uh, Eric Strip didn't have his best game, but um, you know, he's he's been a, a hot and cold guy. Where when he's on, he's on. When he's off, he's a little bit off. But he's gonna play good defense for you and uh, rebound a couple shots. Uh, if I'm yeah, he got into a little bit of, of a foul trouble. He got in. Uh, he got a double technical with uh, their big their big center too, um, which was an interesting situation. There's a lot of fouls this game that didn't feel necessary. Um, from what I remember, um, Weber State's leading scorer was Steven uh, Verplinken. I cannot say that name, but uh, he was a good three-point shooter, uh, knocking down three of those. Um, he also hit three field goals and uh, led their team in scoring. Uh, Dylan Jones, you know, the guy he is, he had another double-double performance, but held him to only 14 points and made him shoot 33% from the field and one for six from the three-point line which was really what won this game for Eastern Washington. Shutting down Dylan Jones is how you beat Weber State typically, unless they are just lights out from three with, you know, this guy and uh, Threat is just driving like nothing. And Alex Chu is able to, you know, drive and get all those points in the paint. Uh, Dylan Jones is who that team has run through. And uh, we were really able to shut him down, which was really, really impressive performance defensively from the Eagles. Um not easy to shut that guy down, you know, being a legit, probably a NBA prospect. I don't know if he'll, you know, make the league or whatever, but, uh, you know, he, he definitely looked like that in the preseason and teams in the big sky have put a lot of emphasis on him. Um, but, you know, he still had 12 rebounds, four assists to 14 points, which is, you know, an, a, a solid night, but knowing it's Dylan Jones, it was a good performance for the East defense. Um, that's kind of all I got on this game. Um, you know, it overall was a solid performance from Eastern Washington. Uh, the first half, again, rough, but the defense, the defense in that second half is what won this game. And uh, it, it's been fun to see the defense really take off this year. Um, Coach Riley said, like, this is the most talented uh, defensive group he's seen here at Eastern Washington in a number of years. Uh, and so it, the defense has been awesome blocking shots, clogging passing lanes and just shutting down the other team's star has been just awesome. All right. So now we're going to move on to this Idaho state game, um, which is this one. Okay. 
So this Idaho State game was a game that was really close in the first half. Again, Eastern had a slow first half, uh, which has been true for the last three games they played. At Idaho, they came out rough in the first half. Uh, Weber State, they came out rough in the first half. And now again at Idaho State down there in Pocatello, uh, this game actually featured a uh, strange uh, fire alarm delay, which you don't typically see. But, um, um, you know, this is a game that two-point game at the half. I believe we actually were down until a uh, – last second three by Kaiman uh, to go into the locker room at the half. Um, and why was this? This 16 turnovers from the Eags is what ended up happening in that first half. 16 turnovers from the Eags, as well as we allowed 13 offensive rebounds. And they didn't score a ton of points off of those those uh, 13 offensive rebounds, only scoring 13 second chance points. But um, it allowed them to keep the ball away from our offense. We shot well in that first half, you know, 60% from the field and 60% from three, but they just had the ball for, you know, probably almost, you know, 1.5 to our one, you know, like they, they just had the ball for so much longer than we did that it didn't allow us to put up the points that we typically would with 60% shooting both from the three and from the field. Um, you know, it, it was strange. It was almost like a ball control type situation, <laughs> like, like kind of like a Kojak football game where they just run the clock out. They didn't shoot that well, but they got so many offensive rebounds that allowed them to, you know, just take control of the game and the clock in that first half, uh, kind of just waste time. And then in the second half, Eastern was able to kind of stop the board, slow down their offensive rebounding a little bit. And, uh, take over this game still didn't shoot quite as well in the second half but we shut them down defensively and and got those boards uh only allowing you know 27 percent uh or 36 percent in the second half from uh excuse me from field 35 percent from three uh you know the again the defense stepping up in the second half has definitely been a um theme of both um of all three of the last Big Sky Conference games, Idaho, Weber State, and Idaho State, uh, this is a game where it was more of a well-rounded scoring performance from multiple guys. Uh, Ethan Price led the team in scoring with 16 points here. Uh, Jake Kyman had 13. Cedric Coward had his 12 points. Uh, he was uh, he was really seemed like a focus of the Idaho State defense. They really wanted to shut him down, uh, and so. He uh, had a good night um, dishing the ball to his teammates, setting things up. But he had he had a really good night defensively with three blocks and a steal. Um, that's tip, pretty typical for him. Eight rebounds, which is pretty typical for him as well. Um, two offensive rebounds is fun to see as well. Um, uh, just kind of scanning through here. You know, Casey Jones had kind of his typical uh, get to the free throw a couple times, around 10, 11 points, uh, get a number of rebounds. You know, six rebounds, typical Casey Jones type night. Uh, Ellis Magnuson, again, another typical Ellis night, six assists. Um, being a good defender up at the point as well. Uh, Darren Erickstrip had another, uh, he had an okay night, you know, to 11 points, which is a lot better than uh, his Weber State performance. Uh, hitting a couple, free, uh, hit, hitting a three and uh, a couple field goals as well. Um, you know, good to see him bounce back from a tough performance at Weber State. Uh, Lamont Watts had an okay game, you know, five rebounds, five assists. He was dishing the ball really well. Uh, he had another steal, um, as well as Hartman having four points. He's typically not a big scorer, but he plays really good defense, and he's consistent, always in the right place, which is, uh, you know, kind of what you need from a guy off the bench like that. Uh, Mason Williams came in and knocked down, um, knocked down a three um, off the bench, which is kind of been his role this year, provides some shooting off the bench when shots aren't falling. Uh, I really like what Mason Williams is bringing as a freshman. Uh, and then uh, Vaisanki got on the board, which is awesome to see because he's a, you know, a younger guy, uh, another uh, big athletic uh, post down from, uh, I think he's from Croatia. Uh, good to see him put up some points here in this game. And, uh, you know, uh, this guy, uh Miguel Tomley had a freaking game this day, this game. Uh, he shot relatively well. He missed a lot of shots, but he was just shot so much that he, he kept knocking him down. Um, as well as uh, Braden Parker had a ridiculous defensive night with four steals and five blocks, which is ridiculous. Um, he played most of the game for them. Uh, you know, like I said, the, the theme of this game was just the second half defense for the Eagles kind of uh, – 
was able to keep them in the game and end up winning the game for them in that second half, allowing their consistent offense to, you know, outscore them and not allow them to score, um, which is just, you know, that's typical Eastern Washington basketball this year. And uh, it, it's fun to see because it, it, you don't have to depend on your offense scoring 90 points a game, uh, which is something that it kind of felt like was needed last year a little bit for the men's team. And uh, that's definitely not the case this season. Um, but uh, yeah, that's kind of all I got for the men's side of things. Um, looking up into the future, uh, we've, we're hosting Northern Colorado on Thursday. I'm trying to decide if I want to come to this game. I'm thinking about it. I'm trying to decide between the Idaho game and the um, the Cheney Eastern Washington game, but this should be a good one. This is a good one to tune in to ESPN plus four on Thursday at 6 PM. Uh, Northern Colorado is the number two team as of now in the, in the standings. And it's a really good offensive team. It's the number one offense versus number one defense right now. And uh, this will be a fun one to watch. Uh, and then Saturday they host Northern Arizona, who's been a okay team. Um, you know, they've been kind of middle of the pack uh, from what it looks like. They, they're the team that knocked us out of the Big Sky Tournament last year, though. So got to be a little bit of a revenge game for the returners last year. And, uh, you know, it would be good to see them put a heart on them, uh, you know, after losing on a buzzer beater to them. And it's also Alumni and Family Day, which will, which will be a good one to, you know, go get out, go see some alumni and go see some family and go, uh, you know, have a good time at Reese Court. It's always a good time at Reese Court. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're going to cut here, and then I'm going to, um, you know, hit on some of the women's basketball side of things. I'm going to be a little bit less in-depth, but um, this women's team has been outstanding this year. So, uh, yeah. All right, and uh, hitting on the women's team here. Uh, they've been just as dominant as the men's team, if not more dominant. Um, this women's team is just outside the top 60 in the country and all the net rankings and all the Ken Palm and all that stuff. I don't know how it all works, but um, they've been dominant, man. Uh, they, they, excuse me, they played a easier uh, out of conference schedule than the men did, but uh, they got some good wins, uh, beating a team like Southern Utah, beating, whooping up on Utah State and Mountain West School, um, you know. They uh, took Gonzaga right to the end and probably should have beat Gonzaga, beat another Mountain West team in Boise State. Um, lost a tough one down there at Cal, but uh, bounced back by beating Presbyterian in Wyoming uh, and just dominating some of these games, which has been awesome. Um, they played a tough one, Portland State, to open up conference play. Portland State's a team with uh, – they came in with one of the better, one of the best shooters and scorers in the league, and Esmeralda, uh, I think it's Esmeralda Morales is her name, a Washington native, um, who just knocks down shots like no other. And uh, they were able to kind of keep her out of her game and uh, win this one in a close one, uh, closer one than normal. Uh, just absolutely blew out Sac State, who's one of the top teams in the nation, or not nation, in the conference last year, if I'm remembering right. Um, I can't quite remember, but uh, they came in and just absolutely dominated Sac State. Uh, won both of, both of their Big Sky Summit League Challenge games. Uh, this Omaha game, just offensive fireworks, putting up 96 points. And then they went up to uh, Grand Forks and really struggled offensively. Just felt like some of those shots were not falling for them and uh, played some awesome defense to uh, be able to pull this one out against a, a really solid North Dakota team up there in Grand Forks. Uh, they talked about it on the Eagles in the on the um, Flood Report podcast about how tough it is to get up to Grand Forks, how they were sitting in an airport in, in Minneapolis for a long time. And then they had to drive all the way across the state of North Dakota to get to Grand Forks. And it was just an absolute grind of a road trip. But um, luckily for them, they ended up pulling this one off. Um, and then uh, they came down to Idaho. I got this is the first time I got to watch them in person. And uh they are just a really, really good defensive team, holding a team like Idaho to just 44 points, who isn't a great offensive team, but Idaho at the time was one of the top um, Big Sky Conference teams coming in to the uh, conference schedule. Um, then was able to have a dominating win against Weber State at home. Um, this was the elementary school day where there was just a ton of future geeks in the crowd there. Uh, looked really, really loud and, and energetic and fun. Uh, Weber State's a team that's always – they're always good at basketball. And so uh, it was good to see a dominating win there. Uh, and then this Idaho State win was also a really good one to see. It was a little close at the beginning, but uh, they ended up um, pulling it out and, uh, and 
you know, winning it by multiple double figures and, uh, you know, that, that a good thing to see, but, uh, like the men's team, this is, this women's team is a team led by their defense. Uh, they're currently, um, number one in the conference as well, uh, five and oh, as well as the men are, um, you know, they, they by far look like the most dominant team in the big sky so far this season. And, um, you know, it's been fun to watch. I'm not a guy that that really watched women's basketball before I ended up getting to college and I'm watching the Idaho team. And uh, they're, they're fun to watch, man, especially this Eastern team. Uh, just kind of uh, – here's the look at the stat, the um, standings here. I meant to show this uh, just a second ago. But, you know, Eastern at 5-0, and followed closely by Northern Arizona, Northern Colorado, the two teams that Eastern plays this weekend, uh, this upcoming week which uh, should be some good battles. Uh, I know Northern Arizona was one of the top teams in the con- in the uh, conference last year, as well as Northern Colorado was no slot either. So uh, those should be good games, uh, fun ones to watch. Uh, hoping for an Eastern Washington win there. Um, going over here to uh, some of the team stats for the conference. Eastern's the number one defensive team in the conference. This is just conference-only stats. Uh, holding teams to under 45 points a game, which is incredible. Um, awesome to see there. Uh, And they're kind of a middle of the pack to good offensive team. But like I said, they're a team led by their defense. Uh, They have a lot of players that can score, but um, are primarily take pride in their defense. And, uh, you know, I think that's, that's the end of the the side of the the court where they, they hang their hat on and, and are able to go win games. Um, They're the number one team in scoring margin so far in the big sky, um, which is, Fun to see. They have kind of a low shooting percentage so far this year, uh, and but they've been the best defensive field goal percentage team. Um, as you can see here, holding teams to just over 30%, which is ridiculous. Um, and then, uh, you know, shooting this well, also really, really impressive. Well, not, excuse me. Shooting this well hasn't been as impressive as their defense, with, but that has kind of been the struggle so far this year is offensively making shots. Uh, you know, they not nearly as dominant offensively as the men's team is, but um, it should be fun to see how they match up with the two best offenses in the league uh, coming up here in both, uh, well, I guess in scoring Northern Colorado's three, but um, and Northern Arizona's one, but uh, in field goal percentage, you know, in Colorado's one and Northern Arizona is in number two. So it'll be interesting to see this matchup of, you know, the top offense in the league versus two of the top or the top, the two top offenses in the league versus one of the top, the number one defense in the league. Um, three point percentage has been, you know, kind of mediocre as well offensively, but defensively has been great holding teams to just over 15% from three, which is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, you know, again, the scoring is kind of the 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 one point of this the one point of this team that's a little bit lackluster, but it's kind of good to see because it means you know you're gonna be able to stay in those games that against better teams. Um, they've been shooting their free throws well. Uh, they've been uh, you know opponents have been hitting a lot of free throws against them, which is kind of strange. Um, they've been rebounding really well this year, um, which is you know fun to see. I, uh, you know, I feel like that's always a really important stat defensive and re- defense and rebounding are two very important things that can kind of, they tell you if your team's well coached and uh, this team is very well coached by uh, head coach Jordy Gleason, um, you know, just looking top three in rebounds, top three in rebound margin, uh, you know, looking at turnovers here. They're the best team in the league in turnover margin. They force a ton of turnovers. Uh, and they dish the ball around, have a lot of assists. Um, just looking at a few more little misc stats here. Uh, you know, number four in the conference is assists, but uh, they average well over 13 a game. Uh, lead the team, lead the um, conference in steals per game, uh, which is, you know, impressive. Uh, up there with Idaho State, who's a very, very tough defensive team. Uh, and it's one of the top teams in the in the conference in attendance, which is Fun to see Eastern up there with Montana, Montana State, Idaho. Um, these girls deserve it, um, definitely. Uh, Aaliyah Alexander is leading the conference in scoring so far this year. And uh, it's funny, I was talking about how we've struggled making shots, but Aaliyah Alexander has been 
out lights out scoring so far this year. Uh, she seems kind of like the go-to scorer on the team, but um, this team runs through Jamie Luetta. Um, she, I'm going to share the Eastern women's stats. Uh, this team really runs through guard Jamie Luetta, super senior uh, transfer from Arizona state a few years ago. Uh, she really kind of leads this team in every category except scoring. And she's right up there. Number two in scoring, but um, you know, she's, Leads the team in rebounds, if I'm not mistaken. Let me look. Yes, leads the team in rebounds, leads the team in assists, leads the team in steals. She's up there in block shots even. Um, and is second on the team in scoring. Uh, she's she's really the, the catalyst of this team, both defensively and offensively, making great passes constantly and, uh, you know, taking care of the ball relatively well. Uh, she shoots relatively well. Uh, she struggled shooting a little bit so far this year, but she's had a few really nice games where I believe the, I believe the Idaho State game, she had 19 points, which is, uh, you know, fun to see. Uh, Jaleesa Lawrence has been a good, good uh, player, both offensively and defensively. She's She's been really good at turning defense and offense, having multiple times where, you know, she snags a steal and then goes take it, takes it for an easy bucket. Uh, out, uh, excuse me. I uh, had a brain fart there. Um, Millie Knowles has been the starting post for the team. Um, she's played good defense and, uh, rebounded the ball really well. Um, she's also shot. She's been the, the highest field goal percentage so far this year, which is again, kind of what Eastern struggled with, uh, on the women's side of things. But, um, you know, this team has just played very well-rounded and really good defensive basketball. And, uh, you know, the scoring will come. Uh, it just depends on kind of who's hot that night, uh, who's going to score a bunch of points. Uh, you know, they don't have necessarily any ex super explosive off the ball or off the dribble scorers necessarily, but uh, they pass the ball and trust their system and do a good job of, um, you know, sharing the rock and um, getting easy buckets uh, when they need. Uh, here is the box score from the Weber State game here the other day, uh, holding this Weber State team to just 38 points. Very impressive, uh, forcing them to shoot 29% and 33% from three. Very impressive defensively. Um, you know, going down, looking at our team, uh, Jamie Luetta led the team in scoring with 19 points. Um, you know, had a good rebounding um performance as well as Jacinta I believe it's Jacinta Buckley I know she's a Spokane native uh nine rebounds six points for her um you know did a good job a lot of points off turnovers has been kind of a highlight for this Eagle team um defensively turning a lot of defense into offense has been definitely the, the strength of the of the women's team um Aaliyah, Aaliyah Alexander having one of her tougher um, offensive performances versus Weber State, but uh, Weber is one of those teams that will, you know, dial in on a specific player and uh, not let them score. But uh, you know, she got the ball to you know Jada Martin and Jamie Luetta, and they both had really solid games. Jamie also having five assists, which is really impressive to have seventeen points and five assists. Just means team is is running well offensively. Uh, we'll go over here to the Idaho State game. Just kind of a quick, uh, quick and dirty recap. Because uh, some of these games I I don't get to watch super closely. Um, this was uh, Idaho State. They really only had one player who put much up offensively, and Taza Jordan. Uh, she's a really good scorer that uh, you know can make a lot of shots. She had twenty points, but um, held Idaho State to twenty eight percent from the field. And 10% from three, extremely impressive, only allowing one three-point uh, bucket that whole game. Awesome to see. Um, Jamie Loretta, again, having 19 points in this game. Uh, Millie Knowles having 14. Uh, Jamie Loretta looks like she should have potential looks for Big Sky Player of the Week. But, um, you know, we'll see. Um, uh, nine rebounds for him, Loretta in this game as well, and eight assists, just shy of a triple double. Very impressive from her, uh, shooting forty and forty two. One of the better shooting performances for this team. They, they, you know, again they've struggled shooting, so they're not nearly as efficient as the insane numbers we're seeing from the guys' team. But 
you know, decent shooting out at output from them, especially in the second half is where it really turned around. I believe it was a pretty close game in the first half, relatively close game in the first half. And uh, Eastern just pulled away, holding Idaho State to single digits in both the third and fourth quarter. Uh, you know, overall, just a, a good um well ran up performance for the women's team. Uh, looking ahead, again, they're playing Northern Colorado and Northern Arizona this upcoming week on the road. Uh, these are two of the best teams that the conference was from what it looks like so far, uh, especially Northern Arizona and Northern Colorado, two of the best offenses in the league. And uh, Eastern has the best defense in the league by a wide margin. So it should be fun matchups to watch. Um, this women's team's just been flat out incredible. And if you guys haven't had a chance to go watch them, definitely do that. Uh, they're really, really fun to watch. And they're uh, they're really good, guys. Like, it's fun fun to see a team like Eastern getting, like, legit national attention. Uh, as a, you know, women's basketball typically doesn't get a ton of attention in Cheney. But, man, this women's team has been incredible. Like I said earlier, I believe they're ranked number 66 in the net rankings right now, which is way high. Uh few ranked teams that they should have probably beat a team like Gonzaga, who is right up there uh, with getting ranked. And right now I believe the projection has Eastern playing Gonzaga in the tournament or something like that. I don't necessarily know, but uh, yeah, no, this team definitely has the potential to go to the big dance um, this year um, looking forward. And uh, they're really fun to watch. I definitely recommend you guys get out to Reese to go watch this women's team. Uh, they deserve the support, man. They've been excellent. Uh, head coach Jody Gleason's done an excellent job with this team, uh, turning them into just a juggernaut this year. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think that's just about all I got for the this episode of Eagles Power Hour. I um, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, we've been looking for suggestions for off-season episode topics and, you know, stuff like that. So uh, feel free to uh, comment down below if you guys have any ideas, suggestions, or anything like that for us uh, for off-season episodes, any guest guest ideas. Um, we're looking to potentially get a few former Eagle football coaches or Eagle football players on the podcast here uh, this off-season to do some relatively regular episodes. Uh, it'd be good to, you know, get the, get the pod going throughout the off-season leading up into next football season, hopefully. But, um, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. This has been Eagles Power Hour on the Big Sky Pack Podcast Network and on FCS Fans Nation Network's YouTube channel. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, like I said, get out to Reese for these games. Uh, they de- uh, These basketball teams definitely deserve it. Uh, once defensive coordinator news is out, we'll be doing a likely a uh, good update episode for you guys on you know breaking down who this new defensive coordinator is, what their past is, what their resume is, and all that type of stuff. Uh, how we feel about the hire and all that. So, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Um, get out to Reese. Get out to uh, away games if you can make it. I know the doubleheader with Idaho is coming up here soon. That'll be a fun one in February. But, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll talk to you all later.